You know, sometimes it's easy to forget how elaborate you can really go with text effects inside Photoshop. And here's a little, simple little thing that I was playing with the other day. It came up with some interesting lighting effects uh, using some simple tools here inside Photoshop. So let's, uh, let's have a look. We're going to start with uh, a text layer, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and set a text object here. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to do the word star because we're going to kind of do a starburst effect here. And I've just got it really bold in Arial Black is my font that I'm using right here, as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust some of the kerning here just a little bit, just between that T and the A there. And I'm going to go ahead and center it in the middle of my layout here. So just align it. There we go. So text layer filled with white. And then the only reason it's filled with white is for the sake of visibility, because I want my background to be black, as you see right here. So if I had black text on a black background, that would make things a little bit more difficult. So what I want to do now is create another version of this text layer, but not as a text um, object. I don't want it to be editable text. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection of that layer by simply holding down the command key on Mac, control on Windows, and clicking right on the layer icon, and it loads an active selection of the text. So I'm going to create a new blank layer underneath this active layer by holding down the command key and then clicking on the new layer icon, and that will create the new layer and put it underneath all in one step. Then we're going to go ahead and fill that active selection with white, normal, and everything's okay. So if I turn off that um, text layer, you can see it's still white text, but it's no longer editable white text behind it. So I'm going to take that actual text layer on top and fill it with black because we're going to have a lot of lighting effects going on behind the text and we want the text to be dark in front of it like it's casting a shadow on its front side. So back to that layer containing the white fill. We're going to go ahead and put a blur on that. So go into filter and go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. And we're going to give it fairly good size blur here. Let's go with about a 15 pixel blur here. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll click OK. And then we're going to make a duplicate of that blurred layer. I'm simply going to press Command or Control J on my keyboard and makes a duplicate. Now with the duplicate layer, what we're going to do is change the blend mode from normal to dissolve. This is probably a blend mode you hardly ever use, if ever. And what it does is it gives you this kind of speckly look on the text there or on that blurred graphic. So that looks pretty good, but it's a little too much. So I'm going to actually drop down the opacity of this layer to around 10%, and it just gives me a few uh, random little splotches in there. Let's go ahead and increase it up a little bit. Well, let's take it to 15. So we've got a few random little splotches around there. It looks pretty good. Now what I want to do here is actually run a blur on these to uh, almost give them like a sense of motion, like there are sparks that are flying out from behind the lettering here. The problem is, however, if I go over here and grab something like the smudge tool, or even if I ran a filter on it, it's going to stay in that dissolve blend mode. Like for instance, if I go in here and run a blur, let's do a, I will do a radial blur. Zoom, you expect to see like a, a motion blur to this, but it, all it does is it merely expands that more because it's still in that dissolve blend mode. So what we want is the dots to be there, but this to be in normal blend mode. So the quick and easy way to do that is merely go over here into the layers panel once again, create a new layer underneath that active layer, then reselect that layer and then simply press command or control E to merge it down. You'll notice it merges down to that blank layer we're in normal blend mode, but now the dots are normal. Basically, they're normal pixel dots. All right, so we're looking pretty good. So we've got three elements here. We've got the original text layer, the dot or dissolve speckly layer, and then the blurred layer we created originally, and then the original text on top here. Now, I'm going to be wanting to run some filters on this text, but I don't necessarily want to lose the editability of the text in the event I want to change what it says. So I'm going to go ahead and convert the text layer to a smart object. So I'm going to simply right click on the object and then choose to convert to smart object. Now what I want to do is distort this um, text object. Actually, I'm going to distort all the elements at once. So I'm going to go over here and just select all three. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all three layers. Press the command key and then we're going to go to control and or, or right click rather on the object and choose distort right here. And we're just going to take that and just kind of do almost kind of like it's in perspective, but 
just so it's not like straight on like you were looking at a moment ago. There we go. Something like that. There we go. All right, so now what I want to do is create that blurred effect. Now on that speckly layer, we're going to keep that layer selected. And just so you can see things materialize here, I'm, this, I'm, I'm working in black and white at this point. I am going to put color on this. I was going to do it later, but let's go ahead and do it now so you can see the effect really take shape with the coloring effect on it. So with the topmost layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and put a hue saturation adjustment layer on this image and then check on colorize. You'll notice, notice it already takes on the color. Let's boost the saturation up. And let's move it over to something like this. Looks kind of a fiery effect, but we can always change it if we want. So now there's a color effect. So now back to the layer with the little speckly dots. We're going to zoom in just slightly. I'm just going to zoom it back out. There we go. So now we're going to use the smudge tool. Now I could run a radial blur on this, but it's an even radial blur. And it blurs all the dots in the same direction, the same amount, and everything like that. We want to have some variation here. In fact, some of the dots I don't, I don't even want to blur at all. So the, the smudge tool is going to give me that power to do that, to be very selective about which ones I apply a blur to. So with the blur tool set to uh, the strength setting set to 10%, you're just going to go in here and pretty much painting toward the center. I'm just going to paint and drag so the dots seem like they have a, a sense of motion to them. There's like little speed blurs, I guess you could say. But notice how I'm not touching all of them. Some of them I'm leaving alone intentionally just so we have that sense of motion, but we have the sense that uh, some of these are just kind of traveling outside the realm, like the explosion really kind of sent them out that far. So that's looking pretty good. I could go crazy with that, but I'm going to hold up for there. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer and put it above the text layer, the text smart object. I'm going to add a gradient. I want there to be like a flare right here in the middle of really powerful bright light. So let's uh, use a gradient tool. I'm going to use a radial gradient going from foreground to transparent, which is the second icon right there, and using white. So I'm going to go start right here in between the T and the A and just draw out that gradient, and we get a nice blur, blast of light kind of coming out of there. So that's looking pretty good. Well, in reality, if this text were in front of a, of a rarely strong light source, light source like this, we would probably see some blur going around the edges, especially uh, closer to the light source. So on that layer, that smart object layer, and the, the good thing is that it is a smart object, so we'll, we'll apply it as a smart filter. Going to go over to the filter menu, go to filter blur, and choose Gaussian blur. Give this about a two pixel, now let's even go down to a one pixel blur. So you can see it blurs all the edges of the text. Well, I don't want all the edges blurred. I just want a few of them. And the good thing about a, um, a smart filter here is that it has a layer mask specifically for the filter itself. So if I fill that with black, it will hide that blur, allowing me to take my brush tool and painting with white, I can just bring back the blur in specific areas where the light is the strongest. That detail tends to get lost when it's closer to the light source like that. That's looking pretty good. There we go. Not too bad. All right. One thing I want to do here is that these chasing or these little sparks and everything like that, I'm going to enhance that a little bit more by warping it. You can see what's going on, but I want to enhance it a little bit more by really distor uh, distorting the shape of it. So we'll choose warp. And I'm going to manually just grab the corner handles and just kind of push these out so we really get a sense of the blast or movement, kind of exploding nature of the text here. And that's looking pretty good. Now, one more interesting thing I want to do here. In this text, notice that we've got the light source seemingly behind that text. And, you know, the blurring and the, and the bright light and everything like that. Well, there would be some edge lighting on this text coming from that light source. Like over here on the side of the R, we would see a, like a little hint of the light on the edge right there. So here's a cool trick. I'm going to load a selection of the text itself, the original text right here on this smart object layer. Just hold on the command key, control on Mac, click and select the layer. Select and then go into the select menu now and go to transform selection. 
Now, we're going to take the center target right here as, as the transform handle and put that pretty much in the dead center of the light source right there. I'm going to hold down the Option key on Mac, uh, Alt on Windows, and the Shift key. And that's going to allow me to scale this selection out from the center mark, which is in the middle of that light, and just scale it out a little bit. And what I'm looking for is that little bit of edge that's just outside the selection right here. So just a little bit bigger. It's like that. In fact, that's probably a little bit too much. You don't want to make it a, a huge transformation. Just enough so you can see that little bit of the edge of the text on the outside. That's like that. Now go into the select menu and choose inverse. And then let's go ahead and create a new blank layer above the text, of course, and then fill that with white. Fill that selection with white. Then reselect the text. I'm going to command click on that text layer once again, and now go to select inverse once again, and then hit delete. And it should leave that little bit of light edge on that text there. And if I just drop the opacity of it a little bit. And there you can see now it's not only not only does it look like the light's really being received on the edge of the text, now it almost gives the text a little bit of dimension, almost like it's got a 3D aspect to it without actually using the 3D feature in Photoshop. How about that? So that looks pretty cool. So now all we need to do is just add a, a background element, which I've got this abstract film background here. I'm just going to take that and drag and drop it over. And because it's all beneath the hue saturation layer we created a moment ago, it's taken on that colorized effect, ultimately giving us that cool burst Let's actually do a levels adjustment on that film background. Just kind of darken it up a little bit, boost that contrast. And that looks pretty cool. So I can go in here and adjust that burst a little bit more, I think, maybe. I can go in here and add that. Just kind of have that bursting out. Duplicate the layer if you want, if you want to make it a little bit brighter. If you want to add one more final touch to this to really make it, um, really kind of sell it, is if you can, you can always, of course, keep it below the hue saturation adjustment layer. But what you can do is the typical lens flare trick. I'm going to go ahead and take that blank layer and fill it with black. There we go. And then simply go to filter, render, lens flare. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, you leave the brightness at 100%. Lens type 50 to 300 and click OK. You notice it takes on the color because of that hue saturation adjustment layer, but to blend it with the rest of the image, we'll simply change its blend mode from normal to screen and simply position that flare right around where that light source is. And there you have it. Very cool, very energetic text in just a few simple steps. Now, remember that hue saturation adjustment layer? If you get to this point, you decide, hey, I don't like that color. All you have to do is open up that adjustment panel and drag it around and see what color you may like. You know, everybody knows I'm partial to blue, so I'm going to go over there and just kind of do that. That looks pretty, pretty cool. So just a number of different tricks and lighting effects just to make text a little bit more energetic and, you know, slightly more realistic without actually using any of the 3D features in Photoshop. It totally can be done.